Hey guys, this is Martin from Bug Bounty Service again. Today I show you another vulnerability called IDOR. IDOR also stands for Insecure Direct Object Reference. And what it means is basically that, that you as a user can access information you're not supposed to access. So it is part of access control vulnerabilities, but it's very often kept as its own unique vulnerability type as well. And uh, there are numerous factors which play into this, and I'm going to show you a couple of examples around that. So if we go to Burp, right, and if we take a look at this request, for example, so this is a, a GET request from a user, and it's to an API, it's to a query API, and there is an appointment ID, and the appointment ID is numeric. Right, so if you watched one of my pretty previous videos, you will already have seen that, that the application takes both cryptic GUIDs as well as integer values. Okay, um, the problem with an IDOR is relatively easily explained. So for example, this is an authenticated session. So I say I'm, I'm logged in as Melissa and I have an appointment ID and I should only be able to query that specific point appointment ID because the the response contains like a PII, right? It con contains the full name, it contains my address, it contains the phone number, date of birth and all, all these kind of things, right? So if I send this, I should be able to, to do that. Now, if you recall from a previous video, we already identified another vulnerability in the generation of these appointment IDs, whereby they are not truly random. Um, they're basically the first four digits are always the same, right? So I would then send this or what I can do is I could go in now and if the four the first four digits are identical all the time, I only have four digits to play with, which gives me 10,000 possibilities effectively for appointment IDs, right? For, from 0000 to 9999. And if there is no brute force protection or no rate limiting on the API, then an attacker could basically brute force every single one of them. And so you see already the problem with the sequential IDs. That it's not a good thing to have sequential IDs or integers because they're guessable, right? Like if it's a, a GUID or something which is more cryptic with dashes in between and truly random generated, then it's a lot more difficult to, or, well, it's basically impossible to brute force this. But then the, the problem is the actual IDOR. So the IDOR means that I'm able to... Um, basically um, query other users' appointments, which I should not be able to, right? And so for that purpose, and I have done this lab setup uh, in, in advance of, of the video to speed up the, the process, but you what, you what you're going to do is you send this request to repeater. And then you can see here that the first four digits are untouched basically. So um, the repeater, uh, sorry, the intruder. And the intruder is kind of like a brute forcing tool where you can send a lot of different requests in a very short period of time. And you have the options to, to say how many requests you want to send per second and, and these kind of things. But I'm only interested in the last four effectively. And then when I launch this attack, so I go over to payloads. And in my scenario, I'm only trying and don't want to go through all the 10,000. I'm only going through um, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1999 effectively, right? Um, so it's 2,000 payloads. Um, another interesting setting here is you can set how many concurrent requests it's supposed to send. So sometimes you get blocked um, if you send too many, right? So I have chosen three, um, three requests concurrently and see how that goes. But basically, um, this is how it would look like. So in in um, Intruder, so it, as you can see here, this is the first request and it, it has all zeros at the end. The last four digits are zeros, then there's one, two, three, so it's numeric, right? And there's the response, there's no response in any of them. So that to me indicates, well, there is probably not uh, an appointment ID with that number, right? But then once, the intruder attack has finished, you can actually sort by length, by the length column. And then if I do this, you see that the 149s were all the ones where the responses were not, where nothing came back in the response. What I'm inter interested in is all these IDs where the length was different. 
For example, this one here. So Aria, this is Martin V, this is me. This is my appointment ID from earlier, which I created, right? And then this appointment ID over here, the next one, Sean, uh, Sean C. Shono, right? And if you look at the request, this is the appointment ID. And so this is actually the IDOR. It's like when we talk about an IDOR, this is the IDOR. I'm logged in with a cookie for Melissa. So Melissa is the effective cookie. So I should only be able to query, as I shown you earlier, my own appointment, right? But I should not be able to see with my cookie, with my authentication privileges, um, I should not be able to see other people's um, appointments, but I clearly can, as you can see this here, right? Like I can see all the different ones like Tim Tommy and Jane Hugo, uh, John Smith, and there's another one up here, uh, Melissa White. This, this is me, right? So I should only be able to see the Melissa White one, and but I should not be able to see John Smith or the others. And that's simply down to the fact that there is no authorization check in place that my privileges are actually um, matching that appointment ID. And that's, that's an IDOR in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to see you in the next video. Thank you.